The 43rd edition of the Rolex Middle Sea Race started last weekend. Across seven starts, and to the sound of the saluting batteries firing cannons, an international fleet of 118 yachts commenced one of the world's most revered offshore races, from the Grand Harbour, Valletta. We have the Rolex start video, and from the water Giovanni Soldini reports from his Mod 70 foiling trimaran. Challenging. Alluring. Historic. Celebrating its 43rd edition, one of the world's most spectacular offshore yacht races, the Rolex Middle Sea Race. The Grand Harbour in Valletta, Malta, the impressive and striking setting for the start of this famous 606 nautical mile race organised by the Royal Malta Yacht Club. 118 yachts gathered from 24 nations, professional crews lining up alongside Corinthian. First to go, the multi-hulls, including an impressive lineup of five former Mod 70 trimarans. Following a series of starts for different classes. Amongst those on show, Elusive 2, the two-time overall winner from Malta, confronting a fickle breeze as she exited the harbour. For the watching public, a stunning and colourful spectacle to savour. And finally, to the biggest boats in the fleet, those in the race to be first home and claim line honours. Leading the final group out of the harbour, the 100-foot Maxi Leopard 3, line honours winner back in 2009 and one of the favourites for this year. Ahead for all yachts now, the prospect of an enthralling 606 nautical mile racecourse, taking in an anti-clockwise circumnavigation of Sicily, featuring active volcanoes and wild islands, and finishing back in Malta. With light winds in prospect, a challenging and tactical race lies ahead. Join us for the conclusion of the Rolex Middle Sea Race. This is your weekly Global Sailing Highlights show, The World on Water, for October 28, 2022. After a quite magnificent launch party, the Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli team got down to business today with the first tow test runs of their stunning LEQ12, the testing platform for the syndicate's OneBuild AC75. Yeah, my name is Horacio Caravelli, I'm design coordinator. Uh, well, for us today it was a uh was the first day of our LQ12 in the water. So we were pretty happy with, uh, with the outcome. It was a commissioning day for us, you know, checking all the system, the mechatronics, and a little bit of structure side. But we were pretty happy. You know, we have been working pretty hard the last year in this project. So we're looking forward to go back in the water and sailing that uh, with the outcome of today will be pretty soon. I mean, for us, it's a choice that what he, we have done uh, about a year ago and building an LQ12, you know, that the rule is what you're allowed to do to test one of your, your main areas of development, that it's the, the appendages. So we, are, we have gone in this direction you know, in order to have our own design and be able to do what we want of something that we have designed ourselves. And uh, we are looking forward really to, to go back and, and testing in uh, the full platform with a, with a full sale sales and, and rig. So hopefully next week will be a, a, good, a good day and we have a good weather to go out there again.
and a cycler's back. American Magic was seen testing with cyclers in Pensacola. Yeah, Kirk Jordan, and I'm on the design team, a structural engineer. Okay, obviously there were some big changes aboard the yacht today. Can you tell us about them? Well, today and all this week, you know, there's a lot of new things allowed in the rule with software and hardware and, and um, you know, it's a, it's a matter of kind of getting those new systems in up to the new rule and just starting the teething process, learning about them, you know, tuning things in, you know, a lot of things like that. And more specifically, that would be regarding the cyclists that we're aboard today? Well, I mean, that's one of the features that we're experimenting with now, and we put them on for the first time today. So, you know, we're just at the beginning of that learning curve. Okay. Uh, did this, uh, in the early testing, did the cyclists meet the power requirements of the yacht? You know, I don't think we have enough data yet. I mean, I haven't looked at any of the data, and it was a little bit of an odd day. You know, we're kind of trying to tune the system, and, and unfortunately the weather wasn't as good as we thought. You know, it was a pretty cold but good forecast in the morning, and it turned warmer, and it was just spotty, so we were, you know, in and out of foiling and, you know, messing around with the systems a lot of the day. It wasn't nearly as interesting as we were hoping. So with it being so patchy in the bay today, would you consider going out in the Gulf where it could arguably be flatter and potentially more consistent? Well, I don't think the wind forecast was any better out on the Gulf, you know, and it's a long tow out there, so there'd be no reason on a day like today to, to spend that time going all the way out there. More of the breeze was coming off the land, so in here was probably a little better. Uh, potentially in the future though? Oh, oh, of course. I mean, when we were here a couple winters ago, we would, we would go outside sometimes, you know, chasing the weather. Okay. Uh, how will the partnership with SRAM benefit the team? Uh, SR oh, SRAM. Yeah, I've never said. Uh, I mean, they're a world-class, you know, cycling component company. And, you know, if we head down this path with cyclists, you know, having their technical expertise, it would be fantastic. Anybody would want it. Okay. Uh, did everything go as well as planned today? Well, uh, you know, as I said earlier, you know, sailing with the weather, the answer is no. Uh, you know, we just you know, had a lot of boxes to tick and the weather didn't allow us to do that, but, you know, that, that's pretty common in this game. They sailed with uh, three jigs today. Do you know if they found that one was uh, helped connect the dots out there better today than another? No, you know, it, it's really, uh, you know, some new jigs, or, or they're old jigs, but, you know, with a little different features and the, the whole rig setup is different now. The rule doesn't allow runners, so it all sets up differently. So the, the putting the other jibs on is like checking strop lengths and things like that. You know, like, you know, we put small jibs on today to check strop lengths and you would never sail with in this line of wind. You know, it was just kind of ticking boxes of sail fit and things like that. Great. Thank you very much. The Essential Amoka Primer for the upcoming edition of the Ocean Race, which starts on January 15, 2023. For the first time, we compare five cutting-edge foiling Amoka boats in the Ocean Race Amoka fleet. Design, performance, comfort and foils nothing escapes Niles' expert eye. So we're a few months away from the start of the 14th edition of the Ocean Race, so we thought we would come down to Lorient. And we've got five of our Amoka teams competing right now on the water, and everybody is waiting to see who's built the fast boat, who knows how to sail it, and who's got work to do. Hopefully, when these teams get back ashore, we're gonna get a chance for a closer look. There's a reason why this is the place where you find five of our Amoka teams lining up to do the next ocean race. This is La Basse, Lorient. This is the place that is steeped in history with a deep connection to the ocean race as well. This is where you can find Frank Camas, the person who, of course, world famous for all his exploits in speed and ocean sailing, but won the race back with Group Armour in 2011-12. It's also where you can find Eric Tavoli. Eric Tavoli, the greatest name in French yachting, takes the tiller himself. This is Penduick 6. This was the boat that was built 1973 for that very first Whitbread race. It actually did the race twice. And it did the race with a depleted uranium keel that was outside the rules, but just pushing the bounds of what people thought were possible in terms of materials and designs and everything. And I mean, we're here in the shed in La Basse, just I mean, four or five meters from Team Melezia's base, where they built 
and launched their state-of-the-art carbon fiber foiling Imoka 60. So you've got the very beginning of the Whitbread, of the ocean race, and you've got what the ocean race is now. But it did take an awfully long time to get from this to that. Nowadays, the steps, the leaps, they go by in a blink of an eye. So this is what the boats of today look like. So we've got five of the Amokas that are gonna be racing in the 14th edition of the Ocean Race. Three of them are over here on this pontoon. We've got Biotham, we've got uh, Team Militia, we've got 11th hour racing team. So here is Biotham. This is Paul Mayer's boat. It's made in, uh, made in Italy, it's a Verdier design. Biotherm is being made for two races. We've got the Ocean Race, we've got the Vendee Globe, and it's gonna be racing fully crewed, but it's also gonna be raced solo. So it's kind of got a foot in, in either camp, trying to make both of those things work. This is one of the few boats that is of the newer generation that is open at the back. Everything is being done from the safety of the cockpit. These boats are designed to be handled from indoors. And then probably the other big thing to point out here and compare with the whole fleet is the shape of this hull. It's a bit of a simplification, but if you're designing a boat to go around the world, the first question you're gonna ask yourself is, am I going upwind or am I going downwind? And for this course, for this edition of the Ocean Race, and certainly for the Vendee Globe, on the average, you're going downwind. And that's why we see these boats with really wide, quite flat uh, shapes to um, be able to surf and plane their way over the waves. The challenge for the Amokas, and it's the big thing that these new designs have been doing over the, uh, this last iteration, is once you get up on those foils, once you start planing, you skim off one wave, you fly off the foils, and you might go nose down. And if you go nose down, well, at best, you're gonna slow down. At worst, you're gonna to come to a complete stop. So this is why we start to see those bows getting really full and a lot of volume up the front, just to try and increase that chance of the bow coming down, but then coming back up again with a lot of buoyancy. It's a problem that I think, hand on heart, I'm not sure the sailors would say they've completely solved. The foil is, is right here. It's just sticking over the pontoon. To design, to build, to install one of these foils, you're, you're talking about six months. So everything, everything in here has been decided. This is, there's a purpose for it here. And if you look at the back here, you've got the water coming in over this front edge, that shape critical, that middle section where the flow is really generating all the power, and then that exit point as it comes off. That little fine edge there, you wanna make that as small as possible, but too thin, it's just gonna to snap. Too big and you're gonna get horrible exit off the foil, it's gonna get so much drag. But if you take a look at it from this angle, you think it's just an aircraft wing, there's actually a lovely little twist in that shape. And all the teams have been going through iterations of foils, if they can afford it, if they have time but they'll tweak the design as they go and as they go, trying to find that perfect shape that's gonna work well in the windy stuff, give them that lift, it's gonna give them that writing moment, but in the light winds, it's not gonna be the big penalty. If you can solve that, you're off on a winner. See the full video at theoceanrace.com or youtube.com forward slash e forward slash theoceanrace forward slash videos. Barcelona will see 10 TP52S battling at hour for the final regatta title of the 2022 season at the 52 Super Series Barcelona Sailing Week. As the world's leading Grand Welcome back Prix to Barcelona for the second day of racing here, the last the regatta, regatta of the season. It's going to be another Barcelona. light wind day, there's going to be some waiting on shore. We're welcoming to back the in Barcelona, the uh, Caprec team, the French team who in fact have been with us since 2012. They've had a little bit of a break, but they're back with a modern new boat. 2012 is a long time back, and but we learn and, and we're still here. So it shows how much involvement and how much we, we love this type of event. We, we have uh, so much fun. The level is so high and I wanted to come back. We, we want to do four or five uh, regatta with uh, the TP52 this year and next year. You know, for me, 
the main point is pleasure. If you look, I'm smiling, I'm always smiling on my boots. It's fun, it's so much fun and I'm happy to compete with these big guys. So Jean-Luc, the owner of Apaprec, has not been with us since Cape Town in February 2020. The same is true for Tina Plattner on Phoenix. Oh, it's definitely fun to be back. It's, I'm a bit ring rusty, I must say. It's, the straight lines are a lot easier than the corners. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to be on the boat and enjoying the Super Series again. That's what everyone loves is that we get to sail with the best of the best. There isn't another sport where we can sail with the Bascos and the Toms and, the, and those types of people, you know, whereas and all the owners are so involved and so keen and so good and, and it's competitive out on the water and it's really nice and friendly and everyone gets on ashore. So there isn't anything better than that. I'm loving the city. It's really cool to be. It's my first time here. I'm really loving it and I'm looking forward to coming back next year. Well, Unfortunately then, no racing today. Plan is for three races tomorrow. Hopefully the breeze is coming in, but meantime, keeping up the passion. The relentless commissioning process of the world's first AC-40 continues down in Auckland with the autopilot system being put through its paces in ever more extreme conditions and scenarios. Dan, thanks for chatting with us this afternoon. Uh, end of day 13 with the AC-40. Uh, it was quite, uh, not extreme conditions, but good strong sailing conditions today with a, with a bit of chop. Yeah, and no, that was really good. And we deliberately headed out into some waves. Um, just wanted to you know, see how the boat was handling in waves, looking at the autopilot, looking at maneuvers um, in, in those conditions and sort of going up to about uh, 0.6 of a meter wave heights. Um, so yeah, it's really, really pleasing to see the boat going well. Yeah, definitely. Now we saw you, you started on the J2, we spent maybe 20 minutes on that and then went to the J3. Um, I think the breeze probably topped out at around the 18 and a puff and probably 14 as an average. Um, yeah, that's yeah. about right, yeah. yeah. And, and there's, there seemed to be, you know, we chose places that were quite uh, steep. Motor heat channel for one, that was proper wind against tide. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah and deliberately out, out looking for those conditions. Did we get, I mean, obviously ploughing straight into it, there didn't seem to be any problems. Going across it, was there any, you know, slight cavitation or ventilation? No, no, the boat was going pretty well. I mean, I think it was, you'd rather be on the, the yacht than the chase boat uh, on a conditions like that. Um, but pretty pleased with how the autopilot's handling it. And um, yeah, I mean, we are going to see conditions uh, with, with decent waves in Barcelona. Um, so we sort of wanted to, to see how the boat was going. And, and on that, well, obviously when we were going into, you know, the development phase of the, the new 75, we don't, you know, Auckland doesn't give us many days of, of reasonable swell. Will we go looking for that, those conditions more so in the, to get data? Is that the, the yeah, I, I, think, I think we will do, that's right. I mean, Barcelona, I think, can see a, a huge variety of conditions, but um, certainly it is pretty exposed and there will be a lot of days with decent waves. So, um, whereas in the cup, we could always choose bits of water that were relatively protected. Uh, the cup in Auckland uh, last time around. This time, um, we we generally would be looking to sail in more open water, sort of uh, out of the islands and sort of north of Waikiki. Nice. Okay. Well, yeah. Hopefully, over summer, we get some nice northeasterlies with a with a, with a reasonable swell behind them, and um, that'll give us the opportunity when it's a bit warmer. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, usually, plenty of plenty of days like that. Um, so it'll be a you know good good range of conditions, I think. And with your, with your second AC40 coming online, as a, a designer, I mean, obviously, great tool for, for match race training, yeah. but having, having two 40s, or two LQ, LQ 12s, 12s yeah. is that is that a, a, a straw that you're gonna use to you're gonna play that card and, and, and do some on the water two boat testing? Yeah, um, I think uh, we'll, we'll definitely have two boats on the water at times. Um, I think it's really, really good for for both design development and, and sailor training, just to have two boats alongside each other. It's um, not 
maybe not so much for comparing outright speed one against the other, but just you know looking at situations, um, coming off the start line, and um, you know just getting used to having two boats on the course. But yeah, one of those boats we'll be making changes to and looking at um, you know different foils, different sails, and so on. Awesome, Dan. Thank you very much for your time. Italians Alex De Mertes and Giovanni Santi win the 29, the Euro Cup, in Riva del Garda ahead of the Irish Van Steenberge and the French Goran Clochard. Italian podium also in the under-17 and female category, with the silver medal of Mose Beloma Berti and Malika Beloma Conti. Next week, with the Halloween Cup Optimus the 2022 sailing season on Garda Trentino ends. Riva del Garda, TN, Perfect conclusion for the final of the 29 a Euro Cup, the last regatta of the season of the Fraglia Vila Riva and penultimate on the Alto Garda, which with three races held on the last day with North Wind and the deserved victory of the home crew, former world-class vice-champion, Demirta Santi, put the icing on the cake in an event that started with uncertain weather and little wind, then recovered in the last two days in which sun, wind and regattas fought they. Marked the hours in the water, the event, closed with six qualifying races and seven finals thanks also to the FIV Race Committee always ready in the windy hours, also represented the final stage of the Euro Cup circuit of this youth class, which is growing year by year. In Riva del Garda this edition recorded the record of entries with the beautiful number of 150 crews from 19 nations, who coloured the waters of Garda Trentino with the windswollen Genicas. Satisfaction for the organizing club Fraglia Vila Riva, which managed to place its top crew on the top step of the podium after an initial fight with the French, who succumbed at the end. Alex de Mertes and Giovanni Santi have certainly exploited their knowledge of the place, but they have been able to control their opponents well, extending on the last day of racing, after the absolute parity on Tuesday. The Irishman Clementine and Nathan Van Steenberg protagonists of a great recovery, second overall and first among the mixed crews, got ahead of their rivals with the 1st of March 2011, finishing 13 points ahead of the second. Bad day for the Frenchman Goran Clochard and Revel de Vaux, who did not interpret today's race course, which required great attention with less wind. For them the worst races of the whole event, which made them slip to third and fourth place respectively. Goran Clochard, however, confirmed themselves first in the under-17 category, ahead of the Italians, Circolo Vila Arco, Beloma Berti, fifth overall. Third crew under-17 the Poles, Sobzak Krolik. Italy also present in the women's podium, between the two Swedish crews placed in first and third place with TZ Berg Cornelia Widestam and Ebba and Ellen Fredriksson, Malika Bellomi and Beatrice Conti, Circolo Vila Arco, confirmed themselves in second place. The sailing season on Garda Trentino will end next week with the last regatta organized by the Circolo Vila Torbol, which includes a very large participation in the Halloween Cup. An optimist regatta that this year marks another record of participants. A conclusion worthy of a location that offers regattas, wind and organization always in step with the times, 